My name is Sergei Jakovsky. Uh, I'm the artistic director of Shemanka Kinetic Theatre, which is the beautiful uh, installation that surrounds us today. What is Shemanka Gallery? Uh, Shamanka is a company that uh, looks after the uh, kinetic artworks by Edward Persuski, which is a Russian-born sc uh, sculptor mechanic. Uh, he is my stepfather, and together with my mother Tatiana Zhukovskaya, many years ago they've created this um, uh, Shamanka experience, which is sort of a fusion of his kinetic artworks with lighting, sound, sequence, and all the theatrical elements that we bring to life these days. Kinetic gallery for us, I mean, it derives from the world of sort of movement. Uh, we, the unusual thing about uh, what we do is all of our art moves with uh, mechanics and electrics and motors and figurines and everything. Um, it's populated by wonderful carvings that Edward creates for individually for all of these machines. And then on, once these works are completed, we fuse them with sort of uh, lighting designs, uh, specifically made soundtrack and sequence, and then we present that to our audiences. This wood, this metal, this glass, you know, the sculptures, you know, they're, they're, they're really intricate. But, but that, that's not all, is it? I mean, light and sound plays a massive part in, in the gallery. Well, the artworks themselves are uh, fantastically exquisite, uh, as is Edward's uh, wood carving. Uh, and that's what he was doing for the first sort of 10-20 uh, years of his creative career behind closed doors in the Soviet Union. When he met my mother, um, who was a former theatre director, she brought all of her theatrical experience into, into this art world and she suggested theatricalizing this artwork, bringing the lights, sequence and kind of giving it a whole new dimension and that's how Shermanka was born. So it was a real kind of, you know, it was a real um, collaboration the gallery. Oh, absolutely, yeah. It's for for initial sort of decade, it was collaboration between Tatiana and Edward, and it was sort of his creative talent and her theatrical vision which made this world so special. And then, as I grew older, I got more and more involved, and then sort of took over certain aspects of design and lighting and sound. And now that my parents are retired, sort of, I'm basically steering the ship forward. <laughs> So tell, tell me a little bit about history, where, where, where the artwork started and, and when they came to Glasgow. So um, Edward's work spans about five decades, probably longer actually. So he started in the Soviet Union era, behind closed doors, doors like many um, artists of his generation. Um, some of his uh, works uh, had sort of political themes were not in tune with the, that environment and he didn't really have an uh, opportunity to exhibit publicly so he did a lot of work sort of in his private flat you know he belonged to um, underground circle of artists like many people of his generation and they showed artworks to, the, to each other but not really exhibited publicly just before soviet union collapsed edward met my mother tatiana theater director who suggested that this work has be, has to be seen she felt it was very special and upon collapse of soviet union and collapse of the sort of communist, communist regime um, censorship has become sort of much more relaxed and that's, you know, that's what there was an opportunity for Shamanka to be born. Two years later, two, three years later, it became apparent so for, in order for Shamanka to thrive, grow and survive creatively, uh, we had to move to Europe. So a few years later, we found ourselves um, through help of a lot of wonderful people and great coincidences in Glasgow, which has been our home ever since. He was able to bring some of his artworks over to Glasgow, but lots of artworks have been made in Glasgow as well. Absolutely. Uh, what Shamanka owns, the collection that I look after just now, only a quarter of it now was came from the Soviet Union. Edward has been super busy since mid-90s, non-stop making art all the way through to his retirement, which was only a few years ago. So the amount of projects, you know, what we hold in the gallery here, that's not everything. We have more stuff in storage. He has commissions dotted around the world. And Shermanka has been seen by thousands and thousands of, uh, of people around different countries. So his work has expanded. Shermanka has creatively grown, but we've also grown a lot in size. So we have a, a vast collection to look after. Let's talk about the people. They, they might come into Shamanka, they don't really know what to expect. What sort of reaction do you get? Um, well, uh, we take our pride in uh, we take pride in uh, welcoming all people from all walks of life, from any cultures, any backgrounds, any generations. I feel that's one of the most inspiring things for me to run Shamanka, seeing the reaction 
varied reaction from people from different backgrounds, different generations, you know, not necessarily belonging to the arts or having arts education. It appeals, there's something for everyone in Sri Lanka, whether they just love the visual aspect of it, the movement, the fun of it. There is obviously, you know, there is comic, comic side to it. There is dark and tragic side to it. So everyone finds something that they can relate to. And that's, that's one of the most wonderful things, seeing how people interact and what they take from it. Many, many people, my, myself included, um, hold up Shamanka as one of the kind of hidden gems uh, in Glasgow. Is that, is that a kind of title you'd like to shake off? Uh, absolutely, we love that title, and we, you know it's natural for us to be in the background. You know, starting from Edward's work back in the Soviet Union era, he, where he was sort of hiding from the larger environment, and we love kind of being sort of in the, sort of in this niche and only being known by. It's a very romantic notion. But however, I believe because I believe Shamanka is very much art for everyone. I'm on a mission to. Uh, unhide the gem. As much as I love the title, you know, I'd love to uh, for as many people as possible to experience uh, Shamanka in my lifetime and beyond. You're now at the helm. Are you going to make any changes? What, what, what's what, where is Shamanka going in the future? Uh, well, there's a lot of creative development to happen in terms of further theatricalization and visual presentation of Shemank itself. We're making constantly improvements with lights and sound, still playing around with the show structure. We have a, lots of things in storage we can still bring in, change things, keep them fresh. Uh, modern technology allows us to present Shamanka in you know every year in a higher and higher sort of visual level. But also what I want to focus on is telling their story, my mother's and Edward's story. I mean it was a fascinating story of birth of Shamanka, but also the environment that both emerged from. There's a massive sort of historical legacy there to be told, and that's not something we have done enough of at the moment, and uh, that's one of the things I'll be working on in the future. Is the artist still making work? Um, unfortunately, no. Edward has now retired. They're both happily retired, way overdue. Um, when he moved out from his Glasgow studio, uh, he now stays in Ayrshire. We built him a workshop there so he can continue carving and doing whatever he wants, pretty much. You know, His passion has always been woodwork, so actually that's how he wanted to finish the sort of last few years of his creative career. But, you know, time came where he felt he wanted to stop and that was uh, a few years ago, he did that on his own terms. So now we have this massive legacy of his and no more Edward Bersutsky's artworks are going to be made.